Hey, so it's Father Taylor here, and uh, I'm here this morning, but uh, it's, a, it's a really lovely uh, Thursday morning, and I'm here today with uh, a person from our church, a uh, longtime member, Sue Ziner. Sue, good morning. How are you doing today? Well, thanks. Uh, great. So it's not a coincidence that I'm in, doing an interview with Sue today. Uh, Sue is one of the folks of about, uh, I don't know, 15 people that got together earlier uh, this, uh, was still during summer, I believe. We got together and like, just talked about how do you, you know, how do you tell your story? And so this year, part of our, our fall theme is that um, it's coming to understand that we are done, not just people that attend a church, but we're part of a community which is really based around Jesus. And so we have become the stewards of God's story, which has been revealed most uniquely in Jesus. And so Sue, this Sunday, which is uh, October 30th, Sue's going to get up in church and try to condense like, like a story. Sue and I just got finished just talking about stories of things that happened to her recently. It was fantastic. We did that in about 12 minutes. But Sue somehow is going to condense her story into four. Uh, so we, we do believe in miracles. So anyway, so we're going to try to do that. But Sue, aside from like the story you're going to tell on uh, Sunday, you know, maybe we can have a little more time to be able to talk about uh, like how you came to really understand and uh, more than just understand, but how has God's story in Jesus worked in your life? So, so uh, I know that it's somehow tied to your just arrival at the, uh, at the Trinity church here. So, so when did you and your husband, Brian, when did, and your whole family, when did you guys uh, come first come to Trinity? Well, it was probably in the early seventies, mid seventies when, uh, Shortly after Father Howard was here, and um, I, I was, I was, I was seeking. I needed, I needed, wanted something more than what I was getting um, in in the other church. So, and, so, so let me interrupt you. So, so you did you grow up going to church? Yes, yes. And so, I mean, so like right as a kid and as a younger person, you were right. a person. Right. Brian and I um, had a kind of a. Hmm. Early, early in our marriage, um, we didn't go to church because he was going to school and then um, in the service and we were kind of hopping around and it wasn't until the last last years that we settled in a, in a parish. But anyway, then we came came here. So, so life was probably good. You know, he was starting his, his uh, dentistry practice. I know you had three kids. So he was just kind of like a probably going for school and brazen kids and all that. But but you said that you were seeking more. Yeah. Uh, and so you came to Trinity. And so I, so Father Howard was a guy. He was a very unique priest, particularly, I, I think, among well, among any clergy. But he was a he had this way of speaking and talking about Jesus that made Jesus very, you know, real and, and close in person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, so I know that uh, that was that was powerful. So so, how did you come? Like, was it was it, were there some other events that came around to, where you were able to kind of like go deeper? Well, he was teaching. He was teaching uh, us about healing and how 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 Jesus did it, and we were learning about that. And I heard about this conference on healing, and um, at the last minute, I was uh, there was a, an opening. Someone had canceled, and so I was able to go. And um, it was at this particular conference on healing, and there was uh, um, some powerful stories and powerful events going on, and and the holy, the power of the Holy Spirit. That was what they were talking about: the power of the Holy Spirit. And that was intriguing to me. What do you What do you mean? What do you mean? And they kept saying "Dino might" and <laughs> that that power of the Holy Spirit. And during that time, that power kind of overwhelmed me and just um, transformed my thinking and being. Wow! So, so many people when they think about going to church, they don't necessarily think about like power, or they don't think about Dino might. That's for <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, yeah. So, so anyway, so you had this like kind of powerful moment uh, as part of your, uh, of uh, your seminar and also the worship that was going on there. And so over time, 
how, you know, how did that, how did that affect you? How did that like make the story more real? For well, you? I, I just had a thirst then for more, for mm. more about Jesus, because that was the question. Here's this power, but Jesus, why? Why is he so important? And I just had that question. And all of a sudden, within a couple of weeks, I was involved with four or five different Bible studies. And it, it just it just seemed to happen. So I had a lot of teaching and, and from different people. And, um, and the life of Jesus became alive. And who he is became alive to me. And so how did that affect, like, so outside of, you know, going to church and being in the Bible study, you know, how did that affect, you know, how you, you know, just like other people and things that, you know, went on in your life? How, how has that affected your life since then? Well, I guess I have been um, filled with, filled with joy most of the time. You know, people used to say, I saw you driving by and this lady with a big smile, I knew it was you. <laughs> it was just the joy of the Lord. And well, there's a song that talks about that. And, and that's that's how it just filled my life. And well, 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 I know this that like, you know, so I've only really known you since 2018. But even since 2018, I got to say that although I have experienced you as a joyful person, your life hasn't exactly been like, easy you've definitely had some challenges in your life and so where has where does those challenges so where have you found Jesus in those challenges well um, but one one major deal was about 27 years ago when um, a mammogram showed I had spots went to the doctor and the first words that came out of the doctor's mouth was so you have cancer. And that just hit me to the core because I was, yes, maybe, but I really didn't think I would have it. Mm -hmm. And I did. And so I wasn't hearing really what she was talking about or saying, this was the oncologist. And um, I went out to the car and I just shook, mm -hmm. and shook and shook and cried and cried. And then the words came to my mind Fear not. I have not given you the spirit of fear. I said, whoa. And that just settled me right down. Yes, Lord. You're right. You're here. You love me. You care about me. You're with me. You will be with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And I just drove around for a while and went home and realized that fear is gone. And it never returned through my treatment of radiation. It never returned. And I, I had a recurrence of it through that. Still didn't have the fear mm -hmm. until just recently. I had, I've had some physical problems and um, I became aware that I'm fearful again. And um, I was in a group for, of people who were praying and another experience of God that just seemed to just take away that fear. Mm. And um, so I'm continuing to deal with it. And, um, and uh, I know that things are going to be all right. And, you know, yeah, God could say, show me things in the Bible or the words and scripture. And yes, that's all important, but the experience of his presence um, made a deep impact on me. And I just know I'm going to be all right. Mm. Well, Sue, I really appreciate you sharing. I mean, it's one thing that we, you know, sounds to in some ways, like you grew up and you knew what the story was, but then the story of Jesus really became your personal story too, the story of, of walking with Jesus, uh, who could give you joy, help you with your fears, and just all the challenges of, uh, of life that come. And uh, I'm just so impressed too that uh, you are one of the most active people in this church community. Uh, every time I show up at an event that has to do with something about 
reaching out to other people. You're you're always showing up to these events. I don't know how you do it if it's not for you know the way that the Jesus the story of Jesus and Jesus' presence in your life is still at work. So thanks so much for uh, just meeting with me. This kind of like our little impromptu conversation. And uh, Sue will be uh, condensing all of this in, in some way in four minutes, just to see how she pulls that off is, is worth price of admission. And that will be on the Sunday service for October 30th. So if you're seeing this on uh, social media or YouTube or someplace, and you want also want to see how, how Sue did when she got up in front of the church to tell her four minute version, as you can look up our service on Facebook or our website and just go to service for uh, October 30th. And uh, you'll see that Sue's part of that too. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in and hearing how we uh, can become not just people who know what God's story is, but God's story becomes our story and our experience of life. So thanks so much, Sue. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing some other stories from people soon. So goodbye, God, God bless. And uh, Maybe we'll see you over here at Trinity Church sometimes. Thank you.